Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Today we're going to talk about Windows 10 S, the Redux. So I got quite a few interesting comments on my Windows 10 S will fail video and to say the least, users were extremely passionate about their feelings about the operating system that they chose, especially the Microsoft users. Now, whenever I release a video about Linux or Windows, um, I expect to see a lot of users chime in and comment. But when I release videos about Mac, I usually, especially when it's um, against Macs, I get quite a few Mac users who come in and have very, very passionate feelings about the Mac OS and Mac hardware and why they use it. But in this case, it was the Windows 10 users. Uh, I had quite a few people let me know that I was nothing more than a shill uh, and also that I was a troll. And I also was told that I should educate myself and I thought I would address all of that and go back and talk a little bit more about Windows 10s and see if I can't affirm why I feel Windows 10s will fail. And I'd like to say for the record that what I'm about to offer up is just an opinion. So it's really not that I'm telling you that you have to agree with me. And I'm certainly not saying that your opinions are invalid. You know, really only time will tell what's going to happen. But just a recap, looking at Windows 10S, my feelings on the matter is that it will essentially fail. It really, in some ways, is a doctored version of Windows RT. So there's your first issue, in my opinion, with Microsoft is they, and this is a red flag, let's say, the issue really is that Microsoft tends to abandon something that doesn't seem to be working for them early on. They don't stick with it. Windows 8 and 8.1 was controversial. I did not use Windows 8 or 8.1 initially because I thought it was terrible, but after using it, I began to understand what they were trying to do with this convergence of an operating system for all their different platforms. And it actually was, in my opinion, a well-designed uh, operating system, Windows 8.1. The only real downside was that you couldn't switch to desktop mode, which was fixed in Windows 10. The other red flag I see is Windows 10S is, in my opinion, is not poised to actually compete with anything. The hardware that they bundled it with, which I do think is a good system, although I haven't received one, so I don't really know yet. There's nothing wrong with the hardware. It's the strategy of bundling this, this weakened, uh, crippled operating system that is dependent on the Windows 10 store and users basically would have to only use Windows 10 apps. The other factor is, and this is to be expected, and I understand why they did this, but all the defaults are locked. So even if you can install another browser, the um, Edge browser would be the default no matter what, which I don't really think is that bad of a deal. Um, you can still use the browser you want to, so it would still work. The next red flag to me is simply they are trying to compete with Windows 10 S with a well-established immersive Chromebook environment that's used in education. So if they're saying their primary market is education, unless the hardware manufacturers decide to embrace Windows 10 S and start offering Chromebook equivalents or whatever with Windows 10 S on them for two or three hundred dollars or quite frankly lower, the adoption of these devices into schools is really not going to happen. And even if they did, there's really, in, in if you go into primary education, you're not really going to see two environments being supported. So they're not going to have Mac systems and then they're going to have Chromebooks. Even if a school decided, yes, let's go with Windows 10 S based inexpensive laptops, it's going to take a long time for these schools to make this decision and begin investing. They're going to have this fleet of Chromebooks that are going to have to basically be retired and they're only going to do that when they're shot. Primary education, money is not good. I don't know if you're if you're aware of that, but I don't see Chromebooks being replaced. It's easier to grab five new Chromebooks for your fleet than it is to scrap them and switch over to Windows 10 S. 
So if it's going to happen, it's something that's going to happen three to four years down the road. I do not see your average user going out and saying, you know what, I would like to pay more for the hardware and have a, a crippled version of Windows 10 on it unless they're ignorant and they just don't understand what they're getting, which happens a lot. I see it with my students. Currently with the Windows 10 Surface Laptop, up until January of 2018, you can get Windows 10 free. And again, to me, that's another aspect that I'm critical of. So I would buy a premium quality laptop and get a non-premium operating system, but I can do the work to do the upgrade for free. It just doesn't make sense. When you buy a premium product, you expect a premium operating system with it. Others say that they're showcasing the capabilities. Um, it's kind of like taking a Ferrari, right? And then putting on tires from a Honda Civic, right? With steel rims or whatever, just the basic stuff. I mean, what are you showcasing, right? Look how great this car is, but we've got these really crappy tires on it. You can upgrade them though. And for six months, you can upgrade the tires free. Isn't that great? You just say, well, no, I bought a premium product. I should get a premium operating system with it. So what are you showcasing? My personal opinion, if I was Microsoft, I would heavily undercut, uh, maybe create a system for 200 to $250, put Windows 10 S on it, and do what you're really good at. Why is Office ubiquitous in education, whether it's primary or secondary education? Because you get it at a massive steep discount. All their software is heavily, heavily discounted. So if I want to purchase software, if I want to get Microsoft, I can get it for a huge discount and educational platforms, schools make really heavy use of that. Subsidize a very inexpensive laptop with Windows 10 S on it for $200 and say we're going to give this to you for 50 bucks to gain entry into the market or even less, right? $25. Kill Chromebooks off. I mean, you're being offered this software that's almost free. You can get Office for five or ten dollars, for example. Have the software installed on it. You got Office. You got this. Um, I don't know what you want to call it—a Windows book. It's basically a Surface laptop. Just make a very inexpensive edition, not cheap, but inexpensive. Ruggedized would be even better, but that may cost too much. And then subsidize the heck out of it, like you do all of your software in education. And then I think you would win the Windows 10S versus Chromebook battle. Otherwise, I'm not seeing it happen. So again, that was just my opinion, but uh, I had some great comments from users, some that I really appreciated. And quite frankly, I can take the criticism. So if you want to throw it at me, that's fine. If you want to call me a shill or whatever, I really don't mind. I don't consider myself a shill and I'll explain to you why. Basically, I like all three operating systems and I just have a lot of fun using them and I think that each one offers certain features and different functions that I really like and I like the graphical interface on Linux I like the graphical interface on Windows 10 I like the graphical interface on Mac OS and on each one there are also things I don't like or that irritate me again my opinion they seem to be equally stable um, I'm mostly using Linux, but I do go back and use Windows 10. I'm shooting this video on Windows 10. Why am I shooting on Windows 10? Well, let's take a look. If I run Task Manager, look at the hardware support that I have. If I run OBS in Linux, processor is running at about 40%. I do realize I could compile FFmpeg and compile OBS, but that's kind of a pain. And so if I just cruise over to Windows, instead of having a 40% utilization on my processor, I get a mere 4.5% when recording with OBS. I mean, that's awesome. And I could run a virtual machine in virtual box and my system wouldn't be overloaded and dying because I'm running all this software. Uh, it looks like I have a problem with my Ubuntu here. I think it's probably fine, so I'll just do it ignore. But anyway, I could run a virtual machine, I can do different things, and hardware support is awesome. So that's one example of why I like Windows 10. 
one of the downsides to me of Windows 10 is the privacy issue, so I'm more inclined to use Linux. And I do actually like the Linux interface, and one of my favorite applications is Kden Live, which edits beautifully, in my opinion. It's very similar to Premiere, but one of the functions that I really like about it is that it supports pretty much any audio and video type. One of the problem I have with the paid editors, such as Premiere, is that it really doesn't have very good support for certain formats. So if you have a variable bitrate video, Premiere, the audio constantly gets out of sync. No other editor does that. Only Premiere has that problem. If you use iMovie, it cannot import MKV files, so they have to be converted. Caden Live will take everything, and it's really a very, very good editor. The one thing Caden Live doesn't do very well is the filters. So the audio filters, they're subpar at best. So sometimes I go to iMovie because I can edit, and I have some really good audio filters that I can apply to eliminate background noise and do other things that I really, really like. That's basically what I'm getting at, my general opinion here. I still am critical of Windows 10s, and I think I've outlined the why. I'm not crit critical of the Microsoft new Surface laptop. I think it's it's nice. It's premium hardware. I think it's a little bit too expensive, but if it's better than, say, my uh, Lenovo Yoga 910, which is a premium device, that's fine. I got the 910 with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD and a beautiful gorgeous 4k display I do have a video about that you can look back at for $14.99 and I believe the Microsoft equivalent with the Surface laptop is $21.99 so that's a pretty heavy premium to pay in my opinion for that particular unit I would probably opt for if I was going out and doing the purchase again I would probably opt for this Lenovo or a Dell because I'd want to get you know basically the same hardware but at the lowest price that I can and with the Dell and the Lenovo I get a full version of Windows 10 so that's my take on it I also would like to say thank you for watching if you really enjoyed this video like and subscribe and I also would like to give out a shout out and a thank you to Andrew Webster who recently became a patron on my patreon website if you'd like to join my Patreon and maybe buy me a cup of coffee for a buck a month, consider going to patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets, drop a dollar, and uh, buy me a cup of coffee. If I can raise $200 a month and with the additional money that I'm getting from the YouTube advertising, should be able to reduce my teaching load and increase my fast gadgets videos. Again, thank you for watching, and thank you also for the comments on the Windows 10s video for or against my opinion. I, I really understand. We're passionate about the technology that we use. I think that's a good thing. Thanks again. <music>